Okay, uh, it's been a really good week so far. Uh, really clucking up the pips this week. So good for um, earnings. So one of the questions that we, one of the things we had to deal with this week is this gap. So we had a really nice push to the upside from late Thursday into Friday close, then this gap down. So we gap down to 150, uh, failed, cl almost closed the gap, dropped back to the support, and now we are potentially pushing back up again. So one of the things we've been doing is we were shorting all day yesterday and then buying dips today. Very slow start to the open today, but um, yeah, once we got going, then uh, we are looking good. We're still looking good for 193, it's a very tough area. This is a two hour chart of the Dow, sorry, I didn't tell you what I was looking at. What did I? Um, so typically, when you get a gap like that, you would look for markets don't like gaps. So they whisk this up on Monday very aggressively, very neatly, almost. I mean, the actual close was right up here. We got into Friday's resistance area anyway. Um, showed some weakness after the close, uh, started to sell very early in the day and then spent yesterday selling. And then today we are just picking up potentially recovering like I said to 200. If we can recover to 200 then uh, who knows maybe even tomorrow we can get uh, the full way up to the top there. So that's what we've been looking at. So that's a way to handle gaps. That is the uh, and that's how you can set targets on it. So that's um, so basically if you, once you've got a range like this, doesn't matter whether you've got a gap or not, just any, any market, if you've got a range like this, this, is, this happens to be the Dow, it's a two hour chart. Um, once you've got, once you've found some resistance up here, uh, so that 26,700 was a major problem. Once you've found some resistance, then just put, a, put the, the fib retracement tool on it. Back down to the last major low, in this case. And then you can see, but all, all Fibonacci retracements are is support and resistance. That's all it is. So if you zone this, that was a major, bear in mind this has been a very bullish market. So it's retraced down to this level, overshot it a bit, which is normal. And then uh, done this little move. Actually, let me get this. I'm just trying to get a, a proper drawing tool. Um, and that is a very nice little reversal pattern there. Higher low, uh, very, very decent support there so as long as that holds we look as if we could continue back up to the 200 mark i think we'll achieve that today potentially so i'm trying to sit in a runner and sit in that one as long as i possibly can okay i mean as far as the downside is concerned um yeah we started i started shorting up here once if I just enlarge this and take this off, so just simple support resistance. I mean, you get uh, a lower close here Wednesday the first um, in the Euro session. So in the US session, they punched back into that level, 
and then by a couple of hours after the Dow had opened, we'd already come from 700 down to 600. Then we saw a capitulation into the close. So this was the close that day. So that came down into support. So from that, from this resistance and that support, you know, that was a nice, nice move. So in terms of day trading, in terms of what we are doing in the live trading room, that that is, this is the part of the preparation we do. This is not how we gauge our entries, but that's part, certainly part of the preparation. This is how we gauge our entries. Um, so you can see, I don't normally have a 50 day average on this. This is a five minute chart. Uh, big move up here at 145, 150. And if you look at the impact that had on the market, you know, that's had a big impact all day. And this last pullback almost tested the uh, high of that. So it's something as simple as that. If you get a big move, you can see how, so that's the initial move. Well, it actually goes right up there, isn't it? That's the pullback. Uh, breaks out, pulls back, breaks out, you might get another pullback. If you get another pullback, that might push, start to push up to that 200, which is my target. So, everything one moment. So that's what we get up to in the live trading room. Now, if you are in London, uh, this is a bit way off already, but I'm doing a presentation in EC1, I think it is, Gracechurch Street, very, very close to London Bridge Station and Monument Station. If any of you want to come along, uh, it's actually an afternoon thing. I'm talking at two o'clock in the afternoon, so if you're working, that's not that's not viable. Um, but if you are around, let me know, and I'll get you an invitation. I think there's even drinks afterwards as well. So uh, <laughs> in, if you're interested, come along. Okay, let's look at something else. Let's look at oil because the oil was a very interesting today. It's invents inventories today, so every Wednesday at three thirty UK time. Um, inventories come out and that has a major impact on oil. Whoops, I'll leave that on, that's my alert. Uh, so this was the first five minute range. This bar here was the first five minute range after inventories came out. So if again, if you range that bar, you will see that uh, the second bar saw us dip into support. So again, there's the initial move. There's a pullback. There's the follow through. Now all we're doing is retracing back. And so I've set alert at this low here. This big black line is an alert that will start screaming at me when it gets down there. Because if that gets down there tomorrow, then I'll be looking to buy. Because I generally find once you get that's that's the whole wave one. I'm hoping wave two will ultimately come right the way back, and then wave three I think could go to 63 plus. So markets don't move in straight lines. We all know that. So how do they move? They generally move in um, yeah three wave moves. So that's why I'm looking, having had the first wave in oil, that's why I'm looking for a full blown retracement down to that level, which is why I've alerted it. So uh, that'd be great if, that, if, if we just drift and hang around today and don't do much more, that's great. But if we hit that level tomorrow, 
that's something I will look into and uh, look to buy tomorrow. If we scale up on the two hour chart on this one, uh, so this range is in oil is from March 28 and April 23. Note that this came all, look at this level down here. Look at this buy, look at the way that got bought down there at 60.20. Uh, so far, every time we, so this is wave one, wave two didn't quite get back, came back into su support, so we're currently in wave three on that one, but I need a pullback at least down there to see if oil can take me back up to that level up there, who knows, maybe even up, up there, back up to the highs, who knows. Typically, oil would once the the main one of the main drivers in this market. This is the Amer the um, WTI Western Texas index, the US NYMEX market. Once you get the once we get to this time of year when the American drive season is the contracts for that drive season are underway. We don't tend to get um, big pushes. The main big pushes cyclically in oil would be as you, the back end of the year, because of, of obvious reasons, because the temperatures are dropping in Northern Hemisphere. And then in the new year, it tends to build up for the dry season. So that's why this bottomed out, it's, it looks very, very similar to um, the indexes, US indexes. Very much a similar pattern to that. Also, uh, if you look, there's a very, very good reason why that looks so close to the indices because if we pull up the NASDAQ, there's a very, very close relationship between oil and a market like the NASDAQ, basically because the more confidence there is in the market, the more likelihood there is that oil consumption will increase because of transportation of goods, as well as um, domestic and retail use. So generally speaking, if you've got um, a bearish market, then expect bearish oil. Uh, one thing I was looking at this morning as I was clicking through the charts, because uh, that, before I stick to the NG for the moment, I was clicking through looking at this one. This is natural gas. This is the time of the year when natural gas contracts will start to potentially increase. Uh, last year on this daily chart, we saw the markets will peak out at June, start to pick up over August, and then break out back in September. It went on a mighty run. So I think this pattern here could be repeated over here. So if we you know, need to start looking at this, in the same period. So start looking at this late August, early September. I will diary that. Uh, in fact, I'll set another alert on those lows, in fact. Because if we come down to that level again, and the timing's right, that's something that I'll look at for nearer that time. Okay, so What's, the other thing I was looking at today was pound. I, I don't, or like, I'm fixed, because I, I have a US trading account, uh, and I trade in dollars, I am very interested in what the pound's doing, because if the pound's shooting up, I need to hedge my account, otherwise I'm gonna give away some profits without blinking, without doing anything, just by sitting in dollars. 
so this is fine for me if the if the dollar is strong then the more dollars i've got in my account the better so i'm looking at, uh, i'm looking for that to come back down and retest this area here if we come down and hold that that could see us at least get back up to those highs on this daily chart Um, and on the weekly, we ask this is the Brexit range. That's the week of June 16 that saw us um, decide to come out. And it's a very long story, so we won't go there. Uh, but all the time, this is underneath this pink area, underneath this, then that could come all the way back down to those lows. And this is good news uh, for me. If the Dow, so we've hit, we're struggling with this 100 area on the Dow. Uh, but we are also, we've also got a heck of a lot of support at 30. But if we do a full blown re re retracement down to this area here that I, I use, then that's something that I will um, buy back into and hopefully trading to the close. It's still a very fragile weekly chart. So understandable why these highs uh, are uh, getting sold into still. So great time to be a scalper, lots of volatility. Um, and gaps, gap downs like that are a big boon to uh, day traders. Just a question of um, managing, getting in the trade and managing it. Of course, I mean, I do like three-way moves, so it's possible we may need another test of that uh, 900 if that is going to uh, come down there. That's something else I'd look at if this uh, area doesn't hold. But a good... A uh, good few hours trading already. Any questions? Anybody traded today? Richard, how have you done today? Have you been in and out of the Dow? I mean, the trading room has been at least, at least three entries. Anybody else traded today? Okay. Um, so, in terms, uh, let's just look at a couple of stocks I'm interested in. <clears throat> you trade on the DAX, Kevin, okay. You done okay on the DAX? Yeah, we trade, you had a number of distractions, Richard, okay. DAX has done well. Uh, that's obviously seeing equal, um, Buckets of volatility. <coughs> yeah, more volatility the better. So very nice moves on this one. Uh, shorted this, you know, I tried to short it early in the day, which was too early, but the, where are we, Wednesday? Um, Caught a nice short at that high and took it down to the 70 level. <clears throat> a nice move, and of course, you know, we saw that level hold. So there's a nice structure to the chart. I forgot to put some water in my office, so uh, throat's getting a bit dry. Yeah, anybody got any questions? Anybody, uh... okay. Now, Claire, have you done any technical trading uh, at all? Any technical trading teaching, no. Okay, you need to, when do you want to come on my beginner's course? I've got a pr beginner's program running at the moment, but um, but the next one, 
Okay, the next one will start, I'll drop you the dates for the next one. I know you're in the start trading group as well. Um, it's just been really hectic, so I haven't been running the, pro, the weekly updates in that one, but I will, I can, you know, certainly not forgotten, but I will drop you, I'll set some dates. I need to, I need to agree some dates on that one and get them in, in the diary. Because I've completely, I've, I've rewritten huge chunks of that beginner's course to upgrade it, and uh, that's a, I've simplified it. I've put added, actually actually added more content, but simplified it at the same time. So uh, I'm really pleased with that program and looking to um, push that one out. You, you're busy as well, okay? But so that's what I'm doing at the moment. The other thing I'm looking at is. Uh, this little dip in the Dow has is, is, got picked up. Um, also looking at these soybeans, on the daily chart, I think I've got a alarm set for $8 because I think these beans will settle at $8 if, they, if I really hope they drop further now. A um, little pin bar here so if we keep holding 820 we may uh, start to pick up here but I, ideally i'd like to see a full drop to um you know broken soybeans okay online trading academy whoa not whoa. you need a proper course claire a proper <laughs> Um, not one of their expensive uh, jobs. Yeah, soybeans are lovely. So I'm, I'm on the lookout. If this eight dollars twenty cents is going to hold, then I'll start to. I'm getting start to buy this. Otherwise, I, ideally, I'd like a full drop to eight dollars before that pushes up. And a couple of stocks. Well, I mean. I mean, this Centrica, jury's out whether it's really going to do anything. Yeah, so we had a decent day yesterday and a lower close today, so the jury is definitely out. Um, I've got a very, I've got a small position in this, but I will add to the position if it closes above at least 107. Uh, 110 is preferable. So I'm just, it's, it's, I've got what's called a marker lot. The mark a lot is um, a very small um, position where it, uh, if, if I suffer any losses, it's really minuscule. But it, it gives me a psychological attachment to the trade. So as soon as this closes above 107, I will start to use... Um, a bigger position to try and maximize what that's doing but in the meantime it's a very scrappy chart and could uh, it's not come down to this extension level so that's why I'm not um, filling my boots with that one and the other one I've, I've already traded this year and I bought a pullback now, I traded this one into 340 from these, this pattern down here in February. Uh, I bought this at three and I'm currently taking some heat on it. But again, it's a very minuscule level. So I am um, waiting for that again, for that one to pick up uh, to see if that one can do any further. On the US market, if you're not trading stocks, if you're day trading only and not trading stocks, then I thoroughly recommend you start to think about um, trading in stocks for swing trading as well. Now this is one, I, I'm, I'm wanting this to come down to 46. Now we just closed a gap here. I think that maybe I'm not going to see $46. Um, but I think this one is potentially going to, this is Bristol Myers Squibb on the US exchange. And 
if I can, I'm looking to get into this pretty soon now. I've already traded this last year. Uh, really nice move last year. In fact, this is the sort of season to buy this sort of stock. Pharmaceuticals have a, have a conference season in the autumn. You can see what happened as we came out of May, June last year. So I'm looking for a repeat of this one um, over here. So again, very see there's a season to this industry. And in the summer last year, or 17, this one came from about 49.50 up to 63. Last year, this went from 49.50 to 62. So we're making lower highs here. Um, but I still think this one is a good option and uh, very much on my radar looking to get into there, into that one. Right, anybody got any questions? So I'm waiting for a dip tomorrow in oil. Um, already had done a lot of good stuff on this one. And so just taking it easy. The other market that I have been watching and I'm backing off before we go is this silver. In fact, let me clean this chart up because it's, I think that needs another dip into 1470 minimum. That is, um, had a big push up here off of that support. But I think, like beans, I think that needs another retest. Okay, so, you know, the usual sort of ranging off of the market on the Dow, which is what we, and the DAX, which is what we've been doing, is, in fact, if I just, bear with me one moment. So as usual, all we are all we're doing on day trading these markets is taking a look at the, the the way in which the market opens, which in this case that's the five minute range today on the Dow. And you can see we didn't ever close outside the opening range. So that this bar here is the first five minute bar. We did not close outside of the range. Came back and retested it. You can see how the 50 day average held uh, an hour, 10 minutes after the open and already had a couple of squirts. So what have we done? We've done a one, two, three, four, five. So we've done a five wave move. And so we're potentially getting a one, two, three um, um, retracement. Not moving great guns. What's it done? It's done. <clears throat> At the moment, we are moving in a 200 pit range. Right. Um, uh, scalper score as well. Let's just. I'm just going to finish up very quickly here on scalper score. Let me just now the reason we do far more than just look at the open range. So this is scalperscore.co.uk. Here's the link. Um, I've momentarily forgotten when the next date is for the program, but uh, we have today we've done, let me think, 70 pips in the DAX. I had a 15 pip stop out of the DAX and a 70 pip short. Um, so I'm 55 pips up in the DAX. I am I, on the Dow, I did. My first trade was 30 pips. My second trade was uh, about 130. And my third trade was also about 
90, 95. So I'm currently about 250 pips up on the Dow and 55 pips up on the DAX. If you if you want to, if you're day trading and want to come in our trading room, you know, why trade alone? Um, it's great to, to have a, a room that we share with a very, very specific entry and exit requirement on our trades. Uh, try and be mechanical as possible. There is an element of discretionary trading in them, but the, it's a system which is largely mechanical. Um, so uh, you know, the more mechanical we are, the more money we make. Uh, the next one is the 18th. So if you want to come on the program on the 18th, then um, let me know. If you do want to do that, then use the PayPal button here to, to book. Uh, and let's get you in on Scalp School. Right, final call for questions. Otherwise, uh, I'm just gonna nip off and um, get uh, for those of you just joining us I'm afraid I'm just about to close up <laughs> I'll, send, I'll send you the recording though if you are a member of, um, if you're a member of the meetup group I will post the recording in the meetup group so you can go over it and look at the last half an hour that we just looked at okay So, um, do I use any other second? Um, no, I don't. In fact, I don't. I only use on smaller time frames. I only use MACD as a, a, a yeah, you know, sort of a visual tool. I don't use it as a um, a real sort of measure or anything. You can see a couple of moving averages on the two charts, middle and left. They're just simple moving averages of um, blue is, is 50, white is 20 on that middle one, and red is 200. Um, so I'm really not a big fan of indicators. I just use Fibonacci retracement tool just, for, just to mark out the support resistance and just look at how the open works. So I trade very simply, so I don't have a lot of other um indicators like that in fact um this is one of the main charts i look at on my on my screens and it's just a white chart with a retracement tool on it and that's it and that's that's one of my main guiding lights so um not not a massive fan of um indicators at all. Any other questions? Come on the next hookup for Scalper School so you can see all our anchor charts and how our um, how we trade data and how we line the charts up for the week, uh, all sorts of other things. Okay, and how we gauge our entries into this open range as well. Right, no more questions coming in. Um, so I'm just going to clock off and get and just put put the re recording out there in the meetup room. Anybody who is not in the meetup room, let me know. Um, in fact, I'll send that to the database I've got as well. Right, thanks very much. No more questions. I'm going to finish up and uh, see you here next week. And Claire, I will drop you a line and update you on, um, on dates. All right, thanks very much and bye for now.